Hey Fit and Healthy friends, are you considering doing a triathlon in San Diego, California? If so, this video is for you because I am going to do a race recap and review of the CVC triathlon in Chula Vista, California. I participated in the sprint triathlon this past weekend and wanted to share my experience to help you decide if you want to do this race as well. Welcome to my channel. I'm Holly of Renewal Fitness and Nutrition Coaching. I'm a registered dietitian and sports nutritionist, and I help endurance athletes fuel for the races without GI upset. So this past weekend, my husband and I participated in the sprint distance at the CVC triathlon. So first of all, I'll just give a quick overview of kind of the whole schedule of the weekend and how things went. Then I will give you specifically the pros and the cons about this race to help you decide if you want to do it. So we don't live in San Diego. So my husband and I drove from the LA area down to San Diego on Saturday and the race was on Sunday. We went down for packet pickup because they also charge an extra fee if you want to pick up race morning. And we wanted to just get down there early, have time to prep our bikes and helmets, put on all the stickers and to go to the course talk. So this race offered two course talks the day of, as well as I believe they had a course for beginner triathletes to help them kind of know the basics of what to do on race day. So if you're a beginner triathlete, this is probably a great race to kind of help familiarize you with and give you tips for running the course and doing a triathlon in general to make it more safe and enjoyable for you. On race day, the race started at 6.45 a.m., transition closed at 6.40 a.m., and parking opened at 5 a.m. So we woke up bright and early to get down there in time to get a good parking spot, and then we had to ride our bikes over to transition, which was about a mile away from where we parked. So in this race, at least in 2024, the start of the race and the swim and the transition is in one area of the bay, and then you race around and you finish on an opposite end, which is where the parking was. So we had to park there, ride our bikes around, and then at the end of the race had to get a shuttle back to transition and then ride our bikes back to our car. So here were some of the really good things about this race. First of all, it was in middle of August and the weather was perfect. It was cloudy pretty much the whole day until after the race, but the weather was great because siding in the water was very easy because no sun was blinding us. The weather was perfect on the bike and the run. We didn't feel overheated and it wasn't cold. It was just a little bit cloudy. So the weather was perfect. The water was perfect. Very warm temperature. I think they, I heard everything from 73 to 78 was the water temperature. It was also nice because it was right in kind of a bay, a marina. And so there were no waves. The water was very calm, easy course to navigate. The buoys were easy to sight. Everything went smoothly on the swim. Another thing about the race in general was that it seemed just very well organized. The communication was good ahead of time. The emails that they sent out had every detail you needed. The website had a lot of information. Things pretty much went according to schedule. So everything was just very smooth in terms of the race being organized. I would say that this course is actually great for beginners because most of it was just very flat and fast. Like I said, the swim is pretty easy, no waves, nothing difficult there. The bike, kind of similar, very flat, one small little hill kind of right in the middle but otherwise just a very flat, easy course. Also, the transition was in a nice grassy area right by the water, which is really nice. I've always been on pavement as opposed to grass, so that makes it easier to run on. It kind of helps clean off your feet. It's easier on your feet. And the distance was pretty good. It wasn't too, too far from the swim and not far from the bike out and run out, so you weren't spending tons of energy running in and out of transition. So I thought the area and general setup worked very well. And then the run was on a bike path part of it right by the water. So really easy to follow. It was all away from traffic, just you and a lot of other runners on the course. And then it finishes right along the water. So a very pretty uh, spot for the finish. And most of it was on pavement as opposed to concrete, which is a little bit easier on the body. I also thought that the podium and medal ceremony at the end was really good. I've been to some races where it's sort of off to the side. It's hard to hear people. You don't really know what's going on. This one was kind of right in the center, good announcer, entertaining. It was very long because they had a lot of different races going on, but they had an actual podium, which some races don't even do that sometimes. So I thought that all went well and the medals were really nice, very high quality. And this is the best t-shirt I have ever gotten from a race. Really nice quality for the females. There's a V-neck and there's a really cute backside to it that I absolutely love. And it's a good sport material. Nice color, nice design, and very creative. I thought they just did a really good job with all of the swag, which is nice because you're paying a lot for these races. So it's kind of nice when you can take some of those nice things home. And let's be honest, a lot of us do it largely for the shirts and the medals. 
So before I move on to some of the cons of this race or the not so good parts, I'm interested to hear from you. If you've done this race before in prior years or you see this video in the future, what do you think? What were some of the good parts of the race? Put that in the comments down below. So what were some of the cons or the things to consider for this race? As I mentioned before, the race start and the race end were different from each other. So it didn't end up being too difficult or frustrating, but it did take a lot more time to get over to transition. And at the end of the race, have to take the shuttle back over and then ride your bike over. Just took a little bit of extra work and coordination to figure that out. One thing that I thought was a bit odd about this race, because it did seem very well organized, was that at the race start, there was no announcer, no national anthem, no horns, no gun, no nothing. They weren't announcing which caps were next. They weren't, they didn't do any, you know, hoopla to sort of get the energy going and pump up the crowd and get everyone excited. There was no like official start to it. They just kind of started sending people out into the water. It just maybe a little bit anticlimactic after this big buildup. It's kind of nice to have that fun, exciting start for the race. And while the bike was very flat and pretty fast for the most part, it was on this frontage road that had a lot of construction kind of right next to the freeway. So it wasn't very pretty. A lot of the area was industrial. Part of the reason I wanted to go down to San Diego was I figured it would be a very pretty race. This one, not so much. The run was okay. The scenery was a bit better and by the water, but for the bike, if you're going out for scenery, this is not the race for you. Uh, I don't know if they will change this in the future because they still do have construction down there, but at least for this race, there was a lot of potholes, a lot of rocks on the side of the road in certain places. So depending where you were on the road, it was pretty narrow. It could be very hard to pass people and you had to really watch for potholes and just rough areas of the road and then a lot of like gravel and dirt on the sides of certain parts of the road. So to just sort of summarize it up, here's a couple of key points I would say. If you're a beginner and you're looking for a beginner friendly triathlon, a fast course, flat, that's not going to be super challenging and nice weather, this is a great course for you. If you want a well-organized race and good swag, this is also a great race for you. If you're looking for really pretty scenery and a nice experience on the road and on the run, probably not the best option for you. But I am glad I did it. I did really enjoy the experience. I thought the race was great. I liked the course for the most part, aside from it not being so pretty and that sort of thing that you expect from San Diego. So if you are planning to do this race or really any triathlon in the near future, and you want some help with knowing how to carb load and prepare for the race to give you energy, I have a free carb load guide that you can download from my website. I'm going to link that down in the description so you can grab that for free. And if you want to know more about race nutrition, both for training for races and during the race, especially if you have gastrointestinal upset or stomach problems when you run, then check out my runner's guide to reducing gastrointestinal symptoms. It's a course that has both videos and an ebook that you can download that addresses GI upset, but also just gives you the basics on fueling and nutrition for endurance racing. And I will put that link down in the description as well. So thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please give it a like and subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. And until the next one, blessings on your health and fitness journey.